Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. It's given us such good news when Gita told us about how uh, UAE and Israel together are nations who are going to be coming in peace with each other. They're going to be signing the peace accord. So is India and Nigeria also going to be signing the peace accord. So when nations are going to be coming together, let us also come together in the name of the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit. So the verse of the day today is from the book of Matthew chapter 6. And he says, Rather seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you. So in short, give him everything that you have got, whether it's your loss, whether it's your debt, whether it's a burden, whether it's a relationship that's going, breaking down, whether you feel that there are somebody uh, who has cursed you in your life, whatever it is, this is the moment where we are going to be saying, Jesus, have it all. Jesus. 
whatever be the number of the days that we are going to be living it in our lives, no matter what is the number, we are going to be just praising the name of the Lord Jesus and telling him, Jesus, have it all because he is the Lord God who has given us everything. So all glory and honor is all for you in this beautiful message that Gita is now going to be taking complete attention and devotion because this is the word of God. Amen. Yes, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We surrender everything into your hands, Lord. Have it all, Lord. Our life, our breath, Lord, all of you give us, Lord. We give it back to you in joyful surrender, Lord, and praise and thanksgiving for all that you have done, all that you're doing in our lives and will be doing, Lord. We pour out ourselves before you, Lord God, this day, Lord. Hallelujah. And we want to thank you, Lord, that you have chosen us to know you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for your love and your compassion never fails, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for anointing us this day, Lord, for protecting us, Lord. Hallelujah. Right through the week, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord, we want to exalt you to the highest place in our lives, Lord. There's no better place that we can be than in your presence, Lord. In your presence, there's joy, Lord. There is, a Lord, a, there's revival, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord, we are refreshed in your presence, Lord. We want to thank you for this time, Lord, that you've united us together, Lord. Hallelujah. To seek you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. I want to thank you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, that you are in our midst, Lord. Hallelujah. Even as your words have been two or three gathered together in your name, you are there in the midst of us. We honor you this time. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Once again, the Lord has given us this opportunity to come into his presence and to seek him through his word. There's no greater joy than knowing the Lord. He is our maker. He is our redeemer. He's the one who has, you know, uh, formed us. We have not formed ourselves. He has formed us. And it's rightful for us to give him thanks and praise. What can we give to the Lord that he has already not given us? He has given us all things. And what he desires from us is just our thanks giving and praise. Hallelujah. Even as last time we had seen uh, the disciples, you know, 70 uh, people were sent out and they came with wonderful, you know, reports to Jesus and they saw, you know, mighty hand of God through miracles. Even when they preached the word, you know, the signs were following. That's what, uh, you know, they came and reported to Jesus. And, uh, they said, we have seen, you know, uh, great deliverances, people being, you know, delivered from the hands of the enemy. And then Jesus said, do not be rejoicing that, you know, the demons have submitted to you, but be happy and rejoice in this one fact that your names are written in the book of life. That is a joy that you and I have, that we have a permanent place in heaven our names are written you know the lord has written our names those who know the lord those who have received the lord because he alone is the way the truth and the life and we, when we have opened our lives to him we have surrendered our lives to him the holy spirit comes to dwell in us it doesn't mean that if we have sinned the holy spirit leaves us no the holy spirit has come to stay we are chosen by the lord even before the foundation of the world. But it's important for us when we when we sin, you know, even when we fall, the Lord is there to lift us up. But we need to come back in repentance and say, Lord, I am sorry. You know, that's what the Christian life is all about. We, none of us is perfect, but we are being made perfect. Our spirit is made perfect. We are made brand new in our spirit. One third of our being, which is spirit, soul, and body, the spirit is brand new. Our bodies are the same. Our mind needs to be renewed every day by the word of God. So when Jesus said, do not be 
happy and don't be rejoicing because the spirits have submitted to you, but be happy and rejoice that your name is written in the book of life. And then we are told that Jesus, uh, we just read uh, that passage, and in that hour Jesus rejoiced the spirit. And he said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and the prudent and revealed it to the babes. So the Lord was rejoicing and thanking the Father for what? That the Father has revealed all these mysteries, not to the wise of this world. You know, people are uh, those who are uh, running after education. Of course, it's not wrong to educate ourselves. God does not tell us not to, you know, uh, study. But, you know, uh, educating ourselves uh, in the absence of knowing Jesus, that education is vain, absolutely vain. But knowing Jesus, you know, and the Lord uh, rejoices and tells the Father, I thank you, Father, that you have revealed it not to the the proud and the wise and the you know the people who have no regard for God, but you have revealed it to the simple, to the babies, to those who are humble. So the Lord appears, you know, to those who are humble. It's sometimes a mystery, you know. The Lord, you know, uh, uh, we have seen so many times in the Gospels, Lord speaks in parables to the multitudes, but to His disciples he speaks to them straight away because it is you know god has revealed his mysteries to his people to his children to the humble and also that we know that the word of god says the humble shall be exalted but the proud shall be abased so all the worldly wise people if they don't repent and turn to the lord they also have an opportunity to repent and turn to the lord but if you know uh, the world uh, rejects Jesus. There's no hope. With all the qualification and so much of degrees behind their name, it's all in vain. But to the humble, you know, he reveals himself. And then Jesus says, even so, Father, so it seemed good in your sight. All things have been delivered to me by the Father. And no one knows who the Son is except the Father. And who is the Father except the Son? And the one to whom the Son will reveal him. So it's a it's a great thing. Uh, Jesus is saying, actually speaking, there is oneness of God the Father, God the Son, and, the, uh, and God the Holy Spirit. The three, uh, you know, the tri the human God that we worship. You know, the Bible is, uh, you know, speaks about the triune God. Okay, and Jesus says, no one knows the Father but the Son. And no one knows the Son but the Father. And whoever the Son chooses to reveal the Father to. So it's a great privilege. We may not understand the, the greatness and the magnitude of God, uh, what, you know, what we are today. Actually, we are children of the living God. The God of heaven and earth. You know, the one who has created all things, the galaxies. If we look at, look at the, you know, the creation of God, even as we look at the skies, the sea, we see how mighty is our God. The earth is just hung there. You know, there's nothing holding it. The Lord spoke the world into existence and we are serving that God. And he says he has revealed himself to his people. That revelation is a no man can know God unless God reveals himself. So it's a great privilege that you and I have today to know the living God. And it's our responsibility as children of the living God to speak it out to people around us. First, our family, then our uh, relatives, our neighborhood. You know, the, the Lord says that this message of the gospel shall go into Jerusalem Judea, Samaria, and then to the uttermost parts of the earth. If it was not God's heart that people in India know, he wouldn't have sent Thomas to India. You know, it's God's desire that all of the world would know the truth that there is a savior who came 
who died on the cross, who carried away our sin, who carried away all our guilt and our shame, who carried away all the grime of our lives. And then he rose again. He, he, he ca carried it and he died. He died and he rose again from the dead. And now he's coming again to judge the living and the dead. That's what the Lord says. Okay, and then it says here, then he uh, turned to his disciples and said, privately, blessed are the eyes which see the things you see. For I tell you that many prophets and kings have desired to see what you see and have not seen it and to hear what you hear and have not heard it. Once again, the Lord is telling the disciples, you know, you are uh, very blessed to see such you know, to see the living God in flesh. Jesus came as our, as God in the flesh. And they were able to see Jesus. They were able to hear his word. They were able to see uh, all the, you know, the, the great miracles that he did. And the prophets of old desired all of this. That's what the Lord is saying. But they did not see it. You are privileged. You and I are privileged. We may not see Jesus. But we know him through his word. Today we have the uh, written word of God. Jesus who is the word. We can read his heart from the word of God. And also another thing is like uh, I shared in last time's uh, message. I said uh, how Thomas. Thomas was one who doubted. And he said I will not believe until I feel the, pier the pierced hands on his side. I will not believe because he was not there when the when the Lord appeared uh, to the disciples. He was one who was missing. And he said, I will not believe. Many of us are like that. He said, the word says, seeing is believing. But the word of God says, you believe and you will see. When you believe in Jesus, what does he say? When you believe and confess the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart, that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the heart, one believes, and with the mouth, one confesses unto salvation. So how do we receive our salvation? By believing in our heart and confessing with our mouth. So now when, and then when Thomas, you know, is with the disciples in a closed uh, room, because they were all afraid of the Jews, that the Jews would come and kill them just like they killed their master. So they were all uh, sitting in a room, you know, locked in a room and Jesus comes in the midst of them. And he says, Thomas, feel my hands and my side. Do not be unbelieving, but believe. And Thomas just knelt down there and said, my Lord and my God. And Jesus said, because Thomas, you see, you believe. But blessed are those who haven't seen, but still believe. Speaking about you and I, we have not seen Jesus. We are just believing the word which he says is the truth and truly his word is the truth. He says, my word is spirit and it's life. Heaven and earth shall pass away. So it's so important for us to base our trust, our knowledge and our faith in God's word. Unless we read the word, unless we study the word, we will not have the knowledge of what the God of heaven and earth has done for us. So that's what the Lord was telling them, the disciples. You're privileged, you're blessed to see what you are seeing now and to hear what you're hearing. And then we go to the next passage. I'll uh, touch on a very small portion of the next passage in Luke chapter 10, verse 25. It says, and behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tested him saying, teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? This is a very important question, which a uh, few pages earlier, we had seen how this man, you know, rich young ruler came to Jesus and he asked the same question. What should I do to inherit eternal life? That's the greatest question on the earth. Where people are running in search, you know, they don't know what they're searching for, but they're running to fulfill something inside of their lives, which only Jesus can, uh, you know, satisfy. Only the presence of Jesus can satisfy the longing soul. So here this man is saying, what should I do to have eternal life? 
And then he said, what is written in the law? What, what is your reading of it? So Jesus goes back to the law. The same thing, even in the rich man's case. Now, Jesus knows each heart. Each of our hearts. He looks straight at the heart. He doesn't look at our out, uh, outward appearance. We as man, we look at each other's expression. We look at each other's outward, uh, you know, built and things like that. But God looks straight at the heart. What is my heart condition towards God? What is my heart, you know, right now? There is my heart. Is my heart, you know, longing for more of the Lord? Is my heart following the Lord? Or am I, you know, half-hearted? The Lord wants us to be 100% His, giving first priority, topmost priority. Everyone in this, uh, even in our families, the Lord wants our families to know Him, you know, as top priority. So it's very important for us to pray for our uh, children and grandchildren, you know, pray for their salvation because this uh, a Christless eternity that they would uh, face if they don't receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior. So Jesus turns back to this man and says, what is written in the law? So it's very important. Now we'll stop here. What is written in the law? So what is Jesus saying? Go back to my word. It's the word that is going to give you life. It's the word that is going to give you that satisfaction. That is Jesus is himself the word. Come back to the word. Look to the Lord. His word is life. Yeah, so we will just uh, pray for the bread and the cup. And we, we will ask the Lord, you know, bring, uh, you know, bring that revelation in our lives, which is very, very important for children of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for this blessed time in your presence, Lord. Lord, even as we come humbling ourselves, Lord, we know we are nothing without you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you have spoken to us the importance, Lord, of returning to your word, Lord, returning to you, Lord. Hallelujah. And we pray for our families who don't know you, Lord. All the members of our families who are still in darkness, Lord, and they are doing their own thing apart from you, Father. We pray, Lord, that you would bring conviction, Lord. Lord, that you would bring a turn around in their lives, Lord. Hallelujah. And today, Lord, we want to remember you, Lord, your death, your suffering, Lord. Lord, we take part, Lord, in the bread that, uh, that signifies your body, Lord, and the, and the blood, that the cup that signifies your precious blood that was shed on the cross for our sake. We want to thank you, Lord. Lord, we ask this day, Lord, to forgive us of all of our sins, Lord. We know, Lord, your word says you are faithful and just to forgive us of all our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We stand here, Lord God, hallelujah, asking of you, Lord God, to wash us thoroughly, Lord, with your precious blood. And Lord, whoever is sick, Lord, your word says, Lord, your body was broken for our sick bodies, Lord. And we pray, Father. Lord, even as we partake in the bread and the cup, Lord, we partake of it in a worthy manner. And our sick bodies, Lord, and our families, Lord, would be healed and restored, Lord, to life, Lord. Thank you, Father, for sending Jesus. And thank you, Jesus, that you came. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for being in our midst, Lord. We partake in the bread and the cup right now. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you.
about how uh, Israel and uh, other countries are now coming into peace with each other. We keep and persisting and praying for peace in our homes, in our lives, with the people that we are connected with. And with all the testimonies that we can share, we want us all to unite and come together and share our testimonies of peace, because peace can be given and it can be given through prayers, it can be given uh, through blessings. You can bless each other and your family people with uh, a peace prayer and bless them that they can have more peace in their lives. When you know that they are fighting and you know ready to tear people down, we are the people who are going to be through our prayers building them up. We are not chosen by God to tear down. We are chosen by God so that we be rooted and be built up in this world. So I'm going to be sharing my testimony first and I uh, shared a 55 page document with you. I hope you go through it and I want it to be shared with everybody. But uh, this is a United Nations project and I remember when I would say the psalm, Praise the Lord, O my soul, and not forget the benefits, for He forgives all our sins, He heals all our diseases, redeems us from the pit, crowns us with love and compassion, renews our youth like an eagle. I mean, what is it that our Lord cannot do? What is it that we need to study more about the Lord and in one of the verses it was written that you know I will gather all the nations and bring them to you and I am an ordinary woman I have been doing things out of the ordinary to just try to be helpful in helping people in whatever way I can and there are sometimes things we need to do with our children and every time when the child will ask you, Mama, why are you doing this? It is our duty to tell them we are doing this because there was a time when, you know, we were in trouble and the Lord lifted us back. He is the one who, you know, saved our lives. He is the one, you know, when you were a little child and you swallowed that stone, I prayed for you and I prayed in the name of Jesus and, you know, that stone was not there in your body when you were sick. You know, children need to uh, remember why we are, you know, constantly coming together every Wednesday. What what does it mean to them? Why is the reason yeah. that they are progressing and others are not? It is because mothers like us, we are praying for the safety of our children so that maybe one day when they grow up to become parents, 
like it is written in the gospel song all the remaining days of my life i will be you know with uh, jesus and jesus also tells one of the smartest fishermen you leave all this follow me and i will make you fishers of men now there were many times there are meetings i just do not want to attend because there is so much of political garbage that goes on in these meetings that you know it hurts the spirit as to what is it, why are they making it more difficult meetings are to encourage each other meetings are to you know do good but sometimes these meetings are more of like you know blaming each other and bringing other people down but uh, from hebrews when he says i am going to show you just a shadow of the things that are yet to come i will make your enemies a footstool how how will my children know if i do not tell them if i do not teach them that oh my goodness look this is what you know has happened another kid uh, met with an accident early in the morning his right hand uh, broke down and all the children are scared so now because all the children are scared and you know they are all traveling at different different times so there is no need for you to be scared you are children of god yeah if he is met with an accident uh, do not be worried start praying for him so that his bones get healed do, don't you know that uh, in the bible it is written that so many people when they broken their bones in the you know they had leprosy when they prayed in the name of jesus what happened so i said i want all of you all to get together and start praying for him rather than like you know uh, spreading rumors of uh, things start spreading the word of healing amongst your friends because not all their friends are christians i said it is your duty so today my son went dressed to help another person out and to pray for them and to save them so i am happy that we can share the word it is not our duty to give them good clothes good uh, shoes because it was his birthday and i asked him tell me what is it that you want and he said nothing i mean he could have asked for anything in the world today is his birthday no 24th september Many photos. Oh, acha acha. Okay. Ah. Uh. So from that day onwards, like you know, one week I've been asking him and pestering him. Tell me what is it that you want? Let's go out for shopping and all that. And all the time he kept saying no. I said, but you have all the right to ask for what you want. And he was like, oh, it's okay. I just like to have you know a good dinner between the four of us. together so we had a good dinner and god has really abundantly gita abundance means yeah. even the word abundance feels you know very uh, small but there's abundance of peace the second thing is even though my husband you know where he comes from and all and i said this birthday uh, even if you cannot give him anything just say god bless you my son Mm. and that is sufficient for me and he said it three times so that was like yeah. wow. Wow. the beginning because he was in the lord you know that he was very much mm. in the lord but uh, over the last few years it is very difficult for him to you know stand up and say that you know god bless you i said if you being the father if you do not bless my son who will i said i just want you to do that i don't want anything else your property even if it is taken away we are gladly giving it because we know there are greater things to come and all this i got from the book of hebrews chapter 10 so please whatever the verses and everything that you have spoken geeta i can easily mark it when you said that you know the kingdom belongs to the righteousness yes uh, when this is 
what the Lord Jesus did. This is what he spoke. This is what he spoke to the tax collector. Yes, I have seen all these things happening. I am seeing the kind of contracts and things coming to me. I mean, me, why? You know me, Gita. I am just the same girl who you saw the first day. From the first day, yeah. the same girl who just wanted to, like, you know, just let's communicate somehow in the name of the Lord. I don't know how we're going to do it, but look at this, where we are. In yeah, one of the posts, I saw the old pictures of us, which I had posted nine years ago. Yeah. Those were the days when Cecilia and all were also uh, then, and it was so nice to know that, yes, if every family, we need to pray for every family, you know, to join in and pray at least for their family, for their neighbors and whomsoever. We have some more time. Uh, Rosie, uh, would you like to give thanks? Yes. And uh, we just have less than one minute to so uh, I'd like to record again in the next round. So the last one minute, we just keep giving thanks. Join in again so that you can start, Rosie. Okay. So keep giving thanks till the meeting gets over. With all our yes, hearts sir. requesting you once all again the... to sign yes. it with the same spirit because the spirit of the Lord must not be done.